Hey everybody, DM Jim here and welcome to a new episode of the Tabletop Engineer. Those of you who have been following me know that I tend to jump around between like sci-fi terrain and fantasy terrain and then just sort of miscellaneous stuff. Uh, I do that because I play a lot of different games and I never know kind of what's going to grab my interest or what is needed at the moment or you know a couple weeks ahead of time. So I try to keep all my options open and I make what I need. Well, what I need right now is some sci-fi terrain. So I've been scouring, you know, uh, Facebook and the images, uh, the, the, the sci-fi images that you find on the internet and things like that. And I stumbled upon, well, I didn't really stumble upon it. Somebody pointed it out on Facebook and I just forgot about it, but then I found it again. There is a Facebook page and I will put a link below. It's just basically people who just take junk and they make cool stuff. They make spaceships, they make terrain, they make buildings. You name it, <laughs> it's on there. It is a rabbit hole. I, Whenever I find myself on that Facebook page, I have to be careful because I look up and the clock, you know, an hour has passed. I'm just looking at all this crazy stuff. So it occurred to me that, um, you know, I tend to make my stuff by hand. I, I make the structures out of foam or chipboard or what have you. I've never, I don't think I've ever truly done a true trash bash, is what a lot of them call it. Uh, trash bashing is just basically taking what you have on hand, bottles and knickknacks and things like that. Things that are sort of going to probably get thrown out anyway or just don't have a maybe a matching pair or whatever. And seeing what I can come up with. So I need a, I need a piece of sci-fi terrain, very specific, uh, that looks very complicated. Uh, like machinery type stuff. Uh, it needs to be three-dimensional, have different levels, um, and it doesn't necessarily have to have any follow any genre like like Star Wars or Star Trek. You know, they tend to have a, a theme, uh, an overall look. Not going for that. So this is a perfect time to do a trash bash. And what I'm going to do in just a moment before I go to the work table is I'm going to take you and show you. I'm almost embarrassed to do this. I'm going to show you my trash bin. It used to consist of two boxes. I had my, you know, junk, I called them my junk boxes. I'm going to show you my junk bin that I basically consolidated all of everything in. It's, it's, I mean, it's good, but it's bad. I, I haven't used a lot of this stuff. So this is a perfect time to dig into that uh, bin and see what I can have. So let's go to the, tra to the I'm not going to call it the trash bin. We'll, let's go to the junk bin. See what I can pull out of there, and then we'll head to the work table and see what I can come up with. Okay, I apologize for shaky cam. I'll try not to move the camera as much as possible, but this is my junk bin. If it doesn't look like a lot, that's because you're only seeing the top. It's deep. I mean, it's yeah. There's the bottom down there. This, <laughs> oh man, this is crazy. This is all the stuff that I have that I just throw in here you know, when I think I might need it, I mean, bottle, what is this? Oh, it's a, you know, the, the plastic that some, uh, some of the little miniatures came in. What else do I have? String, whatever that is. Oh, that's my ring doorbell container thing. Some weird guy here, another ring thing, some chrome. I mean, this is crazy. Uh, it would probably take me an hour to go through here and look for everything. So what I'm going to do is uh, I am going to spend about 10 or 15 minutes just pulling from this mess and seeing what what I can come up with. And then I'm going to head to the table and what is that? Head to the table and see what I can make. Picture frame, frames, felt, some tombstones. Odd. All right. Uh, I'm not going to make you sit here and watch all this, so just trust me. I'm going to dig through this and see what I can find, and I'll show you everything back at the work table. All right, let's take a look. And I'm not limiting myself to just this. This is just what I, what I grabbed. The bottle seemed like a, a good idea, a cylinder. Uh, let's see what else. I took these. Uh, these are some covers for a ring doorbell. Uh, two backs, two little picture frames. Um, this piece of plastic right here, I can't remember what this was for. Oh, this was the what my dog's dog food comes in. 
It's just a clear plastic piece. I don't know. It's kind of flimsy. Not sure if it'll work. Uh, I showed you this. This is like a um, mold for holding some terrain. And there's some interesting shapes in here that might be might be good. And then I threw little bits in here. I've got that, whatever that is. That looks like from a tea light, uh, a CVS cap, some other junk here, uh, caps, a lot of caps, some chrome bits that came from a remote control truck, toy truck, and then just, oh look, a pipe, uh, one of those uh, pipettes for sucking up water, I guess. I thought that might be interesting. And then just some small bits and bobs, uh, nothing, nothing here. So I think I've got enough here to probably start coming up with some sort of unusual structure. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a piece of chipboard as the base to glue everything down. And then I will prime it all and then paint it as necessary. So let me go ahead and get that started. I'm going to clear this off so you'll be able to watch. And I'm just going to start kit bashing or trash bashing. I basically started out with a small piece of chipboard as the base and I glued two backings from picture frames. This gave it a more solid and slightly raised center section. And then I just took the junk I had and you know, you try not to glue everything down until you've sort of got an idea of where you want everything to go. Uh, I knew where the big bottle was going to go as you see there. But it was really this small silver rectangular piece that gave me the most issues. I glued a lot of things inside it, including some tubing that would reach over to another element. And um, once I was confident that everything was where it, it needed to go, that's when I started gluing all the, um, the various items down. Now, I was very lucky in that I had a, a good mix of junk. Uh, I had this remote control toy truck that was a great source of chrome and tubes and exhaust and things like that. So again, just got very lucky with, with some of the junk in there. And as I continued to add more pieces, it just became more and more realistic looking. I added a straw that ran up the side of the tube. Uh, and then when the thing was finally done and painted, I also went and added some wire, uh, red, black, and green, I believe. Uh, just to give it a more realistic look, like thick cables. Okay, this is what I have so far. And I have typically found that when you first start doing something like this, you really start getting aggravated because it doesn't look good. You, I, when I first started this, I was like, man, this is just not looking right. But keep at it. The more bits and pieces you start adding, it starts coming together. And then, of course, this looked so plain, so I started adding things to it. Drinking straw, this exhaust from a truck toy. Um, once it's primed up, it's going to look good. I just, I know it will but I'm not done yet. Uh, I've left a lot of open spaces and stuff because there are things I'm gonna add after it's primed and painted that I don't wanna add before I do the priming and painting. Like these little headers here, this is an electronics component. You know, it's bra brass and black, and it's gonna look good, I think, right there, but I don't wanna paint this. It's just too, and it would be too hard to repaint it, um, the color I want it. So I'm just gonna leave this out. Also, I intend to add some wires and and uh, hose lines and things in here uh, once it's all done. But um, there's one spot right there I'm still trying to figure out what to do with. But I wanted something, I need this for an upcoming event. I needed something that looked uh, industrial, complex, like you know, if you push the wrong button or did something to it, you might cause trouble. And again, it, it may not look like much yet, but let's go prime it and let's see what it looks like when it's done primed. Now I apologize, I lost a section of video where I showed close-ups of this primed, so you're gonna have to do with just this photo. But after I used the dark gray primer, it looked good. Everything sort of blends together and it stops looking like a bunch of little nitpicky pieces of junk and more like a real piece of solid terrain. 
and then all that's left is to get it painted. Uh, the There were some elements that I did not glue on simply because I, I didn't want to have to paint them. They were very small. So after the priming was done, I went back in and I added granny grating, uh, added black to the base, and then I added some copper granny grating to the top of the gray uh, rectangular piece and then the wires and just painted it all up with some bright colors and uh, just kept going until I was I was happy with it. Here I am spinning it all around so you can see uh, see it from different angles. Okay, so now I have my piece of industrial scatter terrain. Now, this is for uh, a game that's coming up. I don't wanna say too much, but uh, two of the clear demands for this were it didn't need to look rusty, like it needs to look maintained. Uh, and so I think I nailed that. It's got, it's very clean. There's not a lot of, um, there's not a lot of, uh, I guess, debris and rust and, and, and stuff like that. So I was going for that. I may still add some more paint. I'm, I'm not 100% feeling, I, I think it still lacks something and uh, I'm not quite sure what. But I will include some close up photos of this at the end of the video so you can take a look. But, you know, adding the granny grading really helped give it that industrial look, some pieces here and there. Uh, bright colored paint to draw the eye to the center section here using bits of real wire for cables and things like that. Um, I, I got lucky in finding these, um, you know, like this uh, exhaust here from a, from a remote controlled toy truck and some chrome pieces that really, really helped pull it together. But what was so fun about this was um, it's all junk. It's none of this, uh, I mean, the granny grading, you could consider it not junk because I did buy it. Um, I tended to use fragments of it. But, but basically, other than that, everything else on here is just stuff I've collected over the years and thrown in the, the junk bin waiting to use it, and I haven't. So I think what I'm going to do is, I'm, I'm not going to do this a lot, but maybe once a month or once every other month, I'm going to do a trash bash, and because uh, I've got, still got a lot of trash left over there. So I'm just going to go in there and see, uh, see what I can do. Um, this was really fun, and I highly encourage you to try it. If you've got some boxes or a box of just random junk and plastic bits and stuff, this was fun. I mean, if you watch, if you watch the video, um, a lot of it is just thinking and, and playing and putting things in places before you glue everything down, trying to come up with something that looks right. And, uh, <laughs> I like it. I, I don't know. I just, um, I, I totally could see this, you know, in an industrial setting. Um, where the, the miniatures, um, need, you know, places to hide or things to climb up for, you know, the high points and stuff like that. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, this is Trash Bash 1, I guess. Uh, look for more of these in the future, uh, because I definitely had fun doing it. And, uh, check out that Facebook site. I'll put the link uh, in the description below. And, uh, try your hand at Trash Bashing. It, it was totally enjoyable and I think you'll be surprised. It definitely, um, pulls at the creative strings, uh, my creative strings, and I think it will pull at your creative strings too. Uh, this is all I have for this week. I'll be back next week with another how-to video. In the meantime, um, please hit the subscribe button if you are not a subscriber and you wanna get notifications uh, about new videos. Please join me over at the Tabletop Engineer Facebook page where I, I think I'm back to a weekly live event. Uh, this last week didn't happen because Facebook was having technical glitches and stuff like that. So I'll be back to that next week. And also check out the Patreon page for Bexham's Bazaar. Uh, if you're not on the Facebook page, I also post the three free weekly PDF cards, a uh, magic item, a monument, and a relic. These are little PDF cards that you can print out and use in your game. Uh, I make those available on patreon.com slash Bexham's Bazaar and the Tabletop Engineer Facebook page. I uh, hope you'll come and join both. Subscribe to Bexham's Magazine. Uh, if you want to, if you don't know what Bexham's is and you want to check it out, go to Drive Through RPG, search for Bexham's B E X I M apostrophe S Bazaar. Uh, issue six is free. It's a big issue. Download it, take a look, and I think it will give you a very good overview of 
the, what the magazine is about. And then of course, if you like the magazine, back issues are always available on drive through RPG. And I release a new issue on the first of every month. Issue number eight will be out on August 1st. That's all I got. This is DM Jim. Have a great week. I'll see you next week for a new video. Take care.